now on Patreon. Now you just sit and wait for 45 seconds. Let, let film do what it's supposed to do. Make something look cool like uh, Red Roof In Plus, which is not that cool. So throughout the night, I was sort of struggling to figure out what I wanted to photograph and what I was doing. And all throughout the exploration, one word just came to mind and that word is noctificant. Noctificant means to wander at night. And that's exactly what we were doing. We were wandering, we were trying to find compositions. We were trying to find things that would work with black and white large format photography, and I'm happy to say that I got a couple images that I'm pretty pleased with. So I composed this image on the 4x5 with Cat Labs X80 in mind. Okay, so that's a black and white film stock. Uh, I exposed it at ISO 100, which is a slight underexposure, uh, which I did push for very, very slightly in post. Uh, and I got some really good results out of it with all the images I took it this way. Um, but the great part about the whole thing was uh, the 210 was like the perfect focal length to hit from the opposite side of the road because you could get everything that you wanted in focus. There was a big sign on the top that I really wanted to get in focus, but... Um, I was like, I'm going to do that with the 90 first. I'm going to get it with the 210 and then we'll go from there. Uh, so the 210 was just perfect. Everything was nailed. And uh, the one thing that I had to worry about was not only my exposure, but the traffic. So there was a two lane highway right on both sides of the road. And uh, I was next to the, uh, the Hooters parking lot, as I mentioned. And boy, oh boy, was that really frustrating. So I'm out here. This is the Hooters that you guys might recognize. There is a two lane highway on the other side of the road that is quite busy with a stop sign right over here. So I'm getting a lot of challenges right now trying to photograph this donut shop with this really cool neon signage. And um, every time I try to take a shot, there's a car that pulls in or there's a big tractor trailer that parks right in front of me with you know the stoplight. There's this telephone pole that's also in the way. My microphone is registering at a super high decibel for some reason. There's just so many things that are going wrong. Not many things that are going right, but I did get a shot with Cat Labs X80 on black and white on the 210, which I think will be all right. But trying to get one on some Portra, half frame with a 90 millimeter. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed, because this is super frustrating. I've been here for about an hour now and uh, Nick Carver, if you are watching, I sympathize with you greatly because this is so annoying. Uh, let alone the fact that like everybody at the stop sign is staring at me talking to my camera right now. But this is the only time that I've gotten a chance to just sort of like chat. And it's really annoying. Let's talk about exposure real quick. Um, because when it came to actually exposing this image, I had a really interesting way to hacking how I wanted to meter for it. <laughs> I went in there and uh, I just took a meter reading while I was inside the store. Uh, knowing that I was shooting at ISO 100 at F22, my meter told me something around uh, 45 to 60 seconds. Uh, with, with reciprocity, it was closer to 60 seconds. So when I got across the street again and I set everything up, that's when I was like, let's take another meter reading and see what this says from across the street with all the ambient light and lack thereof. Um, my meter reading was somewhere around a minute 40. And uh, that was with reciprocity in mind. And I was like, do I half it? Do I average it? Do I just take the 60 seconds to make sure that I was exposed for the interior, which is the brightest point, which is the most important aspect for this image, I think. And uh, the truth is, I was like, you know what? Let's do a minute 30 and we'll go from there. Maybe I'll take a second exposure at some point. 
So as I hit my shutter, I knew I had 60 seconds from the red light, from the next cars coming. And as you know, as I hit the shutter, I'm watching this tractor trailer truck just kind of turn onto the road and start to come down towards me. And I'm like, oh no, oh no, go slow, please go slow. And it was a, just as it started to hit, I think it was like 63 seconds as the tractor trailer truck was coming to a complete stop in front of me. I mean, just before it got into frame, I had to click the shutter off because I wasn't sure exactly what would happen if I had an entire tractor trailer truck block my entire frame. I don't know if that would just ruin the image, ruin the exposure times. I, d I had no idea what, oh, wow. I had no idea what that might do. I just hit the fan over here. <laughs> um, it was just really frustrating. So my exposure time was 63 seconds. Turns out that was the right exposure time because everything looks good. There's no extremely dark areas where there's no information. There are extremely dark areas, but if you look into them very closely, like over on the awning on the left, if you look into it real closely, I'll zoom in here, you're gonna see that there is still some detail in those shadows. And you're gonna see that in those highlights, there is still some highlight detail all the way through the back wall. You can see exactly how much a cappuccino costs on the back wall. I just, I, I love that everything flowed as, as nicely as it did, even though I was super frustrated with the entire process. Spending two hours to take two images. That was the first one, by the way. And I nailed it. I'm very happy with it. The second image that I took there, I decided to go half frame with my Intrepid half frame dark slide. Uh, and my 90 millimeter SA with some Portra 160. So what I ended up doing for this was exposing for the bottom half of my frame. As you guys know, half frame, you're only getting a two by three image, and, or two by five image, sorry. And uh, I just put a whole lot of tilt on that camera to get the storefront and the donut dip sign that was over in the corner. I haven't developed it yet, uh, maybe by the time this video is ready to go out. Maybe I'll have that in there. And if I do, great. But uh, there was a car in the in the front of the shop. There was an old man who literally was like a statue standing at the front uh, counter. And he didn't move for the entire exposure of 60 seconds. So um, maybe that one looks good. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe there's some out of focus areas. I don't know. I really, I was so jazzed about the first image with um, my black and white uh, Cat Labs X80 um, that I was just like, I don't, you know, this, the rest of it's cake, the rest of it's cake. I, I, got, I got what I wanted here. Um, but yeah, super happy, super, super happy. We continued on, where did we go after this? Oh, <laughs> I was like, I was done. I was like, I was over it. I, uh, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go take, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go some back roads through Springfield. I don't go through Springfield very often. And uh, when I got off, um, actually I took Route 20 back and uh, I went off to Springfield and I was like, I saw this cool location for this underpass and I got out of my car and I was like, I'm gonna record this, this is cool. Busy roads all around, can't avoid it no matter what I do. I was uh, kind of digging that shot, well at least I thought I might be digging that shot, but I don't think I'm, I don't, this isn't, there isn't a place to park here and this is a sketchy abandoned building in Springfield. Uh, so I was like, um, no, let's, let's continue on please. And uh, I moved down a little bit further towards Main Street, which is a street that I don't often take in Springfield. And uh, I saw this side street lit up with these beautiful Christmas lights hanging from building to building. And I was like, well, I gotta go see what that is. Came back around, could not have been happier.
this street had a bunch of cool stuff on it. Uh, this old hotel, uh, this old billiards place, Smith's Billiards. And um, that was the center of my attention. I was like, I want to take a picture of that. So I set up the 90 millimeter on that Cat Labs and I just set my 4x5 up, the Intrepid 4x5, backed it up a little bit on that street and uh, composed. And it was really easy to compose, especially, I mean, at night, it's hard to compose with a 90 millimeter. It's really dim, it's a little dark, but uh, what happens is when you have a bright point of light, like this Miss Billiard sign, uh, it's easy to find focus on just that and then just stay honed in on just that. Uh, so that's what I did. And uh, everything else just kind of fell into place, make sure everything was straight and even. Couldn't be happier with this image. It's, it's interesting like when you start to look at the details of this image. Now, I was surprised by it in a couple of ways because um, shooting this film, from what I have found, box speed or even close to box speed, I have shot it at ISO 80 and ISO 100, uh, it's fairly flat. It's going to give you fairly even gray tones throughout, even tonality throughout. And um, I was surprised to see such contrast in this image. Um, and this was not added contrast. Everything that you see here has been almost exactly the same as it came out of my, uh, my Epson, which I try to uh, scan fairly flat, um, try not to get too much uh, in the way of like a major adjustments at that point. But I think the coolest part is that you can make out a whole lot of detail in this image. Um, you can really see all the little details on the signs and on the street. Um, it's just, that's the beauty of four by five is that there's just an abundance of detail and you can really nitpick through an image and go corner to corner and just try to find every little thing about the image that made it so interesting and unique. And I don't know if this is a super unique and interesting image, but I, I'm fairly fond of it. I like old buildings and, uh, I like them even better on four by five. My side view mirror as I was pulling away, I could see that there was like this mural on the facade of, of uh, the brick wall of that billiards uh, building. And as I was pulling away, I was like, oh no, this is a one way street. There's no parking anymore. So I'm gonna go up and come back around. So I did and I came back around and I pulled up the four by five. And as I did, I realized that all of the uh, mural, every single piece of the mural was a camera or uh, film manufacture like old film camera ads they had like rico nikon they had a bolex um they had leica up on there canon they had like every cool old vintage film ad painted all on the side of this uh this building and i was like well i i can't not take a picture of that so that's exactly what i did set up the four by five the 90 millimeter pulled it a little bit back up onto the sidewalk it was a difficult composition Headlights coming straight into the lens, um, the big bright bulbs of Christmas lights coming around on the top, um, the building off on the left, which at well before when I got there it was covered in fog, but at, at that point it was starting to kind of disappear or dissipate. And uh, ultimately, this image, I could not find focus on the building. I was sitting there with my loop in complete darkness. Well, not complete darkness, partial darkness. And, you know, I'm on the streets of Springfield and I got people walking around me 9.30 at night and they're like, what's this kid doing? What is this kid doing? And I'm just like, oh, God, please don't stab me. <laughs> you, you joke, but that there's a lot of stabbings in Springfield, my friends. Yeah, it may not seem very dangerous, but it is. Okay. So I couldn't find focus on that damn wall to save my life. So I was like, let's just stop my lens down F32, straight, shoot it fairly straight on. With the 90, most things are going to be in focus. As long as I don't have a lot of tilt or swing, I'm going to be okay. So that's what I did. I just tried to zero everything out, take my, take my image. And it worked out. It's slightly soft. There might have been a little bit of shift on there. Um, there might have been just a tiny bit of tilt. <laughs> not not much to go like that's super out of focus in fact 
it's not the greatest image compositionally, but I, I really happen to like the way that just the building looked with the lights coming down and uh, you get the streaks with the, you know, the headlights that were coming by on the road. Just interesting and uh, ultimately worth taking a picture of. Well, you guys may know that I look a little bit different. I got my hair looking all crazy because I've worn a hat all day. Got a different shirt on. Anyways, uh, the end of this video was supposed to be uh, a giveaway and it was supposed to be done before Christmas, but I had some computer issues that prevented me from doing that. So we're gonna do it here now. And uh, this image right here, this donut dip shop shot, Hey, look, it's like Inception. I can see you. You can see me. Um, I'm going to be giving this away. This eight and a half by 11, uh, no frame included, um, to a random commenter on this video. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel publicly so I can see it and uh, comment. That's it. Just comment that you want the picture. You don't, you don't have to say anything. As long as you've commented and you're subscribed, you're entered to win. And I will give this away to a random commenter. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoy it. It's a way to give back to some of you who aren't patrons, who can't uh, you know, afford to support uh, the patron Patreon. That's okay. I'm not mad at you, I swear. Um, but I want to be able to give back to those of you who have given me so much. So um, this is going to be the gift. And I will be picking out one of you randomly. I will announce it on Instagram, through my Instagram story. I might even make a post about it. Uh, I'll tag you in it and then I'll send you a DM. If you're not on Instagram, then uh, I'll do my best to reach out to you through YouTube. I'm just going to hope that you respond and see if you've got a comment response. A lot of people don't. I've done this in the past and people just don't respond. So keep an eye out for that stuff. Um, and if you feel like doing so, leave your Instagram handle. I'll find you and I'll get this over to you for free. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a long one. It was a little bit, uh, it was a little rough at times, let's be honest. But I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye. Boy, oh boy, what a night. I just shot around Springfield. I actually just decided, I was like, I'm gonna go to Springfield on my way, on my way out of the Holyoke West Springfield area. And boy, oh boy, uh, there was a really cool camera mural that I'd never seen before. So I got a picture of that. Hopefully it turns out. Okay, time to go home. <laughs> it's getting late. Hella late, my friends.